Well, it seems like there has been quite a bit of talk lately about the Alabama shake. Hi there, welcome to The Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Make sure before the video gets going, you hit that subscribe button and punch the notification bell. We have videos three times per week, 52 weeks per year. And if you just can't get enough, make sure that you check out our blog site as well, thebassfishinglife.com. Thank you so very much. Well, it seems like every place that I look in the last week or two, there have been all kinds of different YouTubers, magazines, I've heard of, you know, podcasts, whatever it might be. People are talking about the Alabama shake. And I actually discussed this uh, last fall in a video, three different ways to uh, use or present the swim jig. I can go ahead and put that link down below. And I mentioned Randy Howell, a professional bass angler in that video whose home is Alabama and how he presents his swim jig. Well, I've heard Mark Daniels talking about this. I've heard Greg Hackney talking about this. And these are all guys that make their living catching bass and putting them in the boat. And the Alabama shake is just nothing more than a presentation. And it's really kind of been localized to Alabama and that deep south, but it is slowly spreading out I've talked about in the past that the presentation that I like to use a lot is one that was popularized by Tom Monsoor from La Crosse, Wisconsin, and it's more just of a, a floating, slightly sinking type of a presentation. Well, the Alabama Shake is completely different and way more aggressive, and that's what we're going to focus on today. So especially in all three phases of the spawn, the pre-spawn, spawn, and the post-spawn, you can hopefully go out there with a swim jig and just hammer some big, big bass. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're talking about a swim jig. This is a swim jig presentation. And in the last five years, 10 years, anglers have really figured out that a swim jig is something that can be used all year long. I mean, if that water, well, let me put it this way. If the ice is out, a swim jig can catch fish okay it, it's that good of a presentation i personally throw a swim jig a lot it's pretty much always the first lure that i have tied on no matter where i go i'm starting off with a swim jig and one of the reasons i really like it it can cover a ton of water and it's not quite as aggressive as let's say your vibrating jigs or your spinner baits it doesn't have that that same thump to it so it's more like a a finesse type of a presentation that you can still fish quickly and cover water like your traditional power presentations so the first thing that i want to discuss is how do we need to rig this up as far as the equipment goes to make sure that you're fishing the alabama shake as efficiently as possible well first is the rod i prefer to use a medium heavy power rated rod with this particular presentation and everything I'm going to talk about here as far as the rod and the line all has to do with getting as much of your kinetic energy from your wrist, your hand to the lure as quickly as possible. So I find that a rod with a medium heavy power rating, a little bit stiffer backbone is I can manipulate that lure with less movement in my wrist. I don't have to really work it with my hand all that much if I had more of a medium power rated or a more parabolic action rod. I want that energy transferred to the lure as quickly as possible. So I use one just over seven foot. And this is the model that I have right here that I really like to use with this particular presentation. As far as the reel goes, you've got a range of options. This particular reel is a high speed and that's 7273 to gear ratio. So this is what I use most of the time for this presentation. But this next part is absolutely critical and a lot of people will talk about this and that is the line that you have when doing the Alabama shake. Randy Howell talks about when he uses this presentation, he says, you know what, I think braid is the only thing that you can go with. 
I tend to agree with them. Or braid to a floral leader if, you, if you're really worried about uh, fish in that ultra clear water seeing it. But the key is to having line that has no stretch. And once again, that goes back to transferring energy from your hand to the lure as quick as possible. Monofilament has a surprisingly large amount of stretch to it. You'll still get some bounce out of there, but you'll be more efficient if you're using a line with no stretch and straight braid is a great way to go when presenting the Alabama Shake. Now let's talk about the trailer. Most of the time, I have got a twin tail grub for my trailer. I like its compact size and I swim it most of the time. I'm more of a horizontal type of a presentation and these twin tails do a great job for me. But with the Alabama Shake, that lure, and you can see in the footage here, it is just bouncing and pulsing all over the place. So when using this particular presentation, I switch it over to something that has some more appendage length to it. For example, like a craw, uh, you could use a creature bait that's got some longer appendages to it. But in this particular situation, I've got a craw right here, okay? This is a rage craw. I have shortened up the body, nipped off the top part of it because I want to make sure that it is still a compact design. I don't want the fish hitting the trailer and missing the hook. Now, as far as the actual presentation goes, this is where you want to have your rod in roughly about that 10 o'clock position and you're just literally bouncing it all the way back. Just shake that thing all the way back to the boat, pulling up your slack line as you go. So it's just shake, 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 and just bouncing that lure like crazy on the end of that line. Now the reason this works, and it can work all year, but the reason it works really well in all three phases of the spawn is because during the spring, bass especially hate Bluegills. Bluegill sunfish are always raiding their nests. And if you've ever watched a bass up on the bed, it is chasing off bluegills constantly. Those poor things. So they're going to run a bluegill off, then more come in from behind it. The bass turns around, chases them off the other way. More bluegills come in. It's a never ending process. So that is why during the pre spawn, spawn, and post spawn, if I'm fishing a swim jig and focusing on this Alabama shake, I've got these bluegill types of colorations and patterns. I've got your greens, got your some of your chartreuses in it. The trailers are going to match. I want to look like a bluegill or whatever sunfish species you have in, in your lake because bass are already keyed in on them and they cannot stand them. So they are going to hit this lure very aggressively. And I find that they hit swim jigs aggressively all the time, but they really hit it aggressively during this spawning period. Okay, all the way up through the post spawn, they just hammer it. Now, as far as the hook set, especially if you're fishing this ultra shallow, when fish are really shallow, the only place they have to go when they attack something is to deeper water, which means most of the time they are running towards you. Okay, so you've got to really reel up that slack line. That's where those high speed reels help out. You get that slack line pulled up quickly, but make sure don't set the hook on them until you feel a little bit of load or weight to it. Make sure they have got it, especially in those ultra shallow situations. Then you can go ahead and set the hook and drive it home. And I think you're going to find that your hookup ratio is really good. So that in a nutshell is the Alabama Shake, the equipment that I use for it, um, how the retrieve goes. You can see what it has looked like here underwater. I'm not going to lie, it is a little bit exhausting to fish, especially if you have not fished this particular presentation. It's a lot of work just to keep that thing shaking all the way back to the boat, but that's why I like that medium heavy power rated rod and make sure you're using line with no stretch more of your energy is going to the lure and it's not wasted. Well, I hope that you have excellent luck out there this spring with the Alabama Shake. If you've heard about it, this is what everybody's talking about. Hey, make sure that you go out and encourage someone today because you never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.